And then there's one more known SMI suppression attack, the Ascenter Sandman attack. And this uses Intel TXT in order to suppress SMIs. So Intel TXT is supposed to be a defensive technology, but in this particular case, because the attacker wants something that can suppress SMIs, it does fit the bill there. And the countermeasure against this would again be using Intel BIOSGuard, which would say, you know, I don't care if you suppress SMIs. If you're not an authenticated code module running an SMM, you don't get to write to the BIOS. And the other way is that TXT has a notion of launch control policies that are basically restrictions to say like, you know, this TXT code can run and this other code cannot. Or, you know, on many systems that don't use TXT, just straight up disabling TXT would be a way to deal with this. Of course, that would not be recommended these days because Microsoft is moving in the direction of using TXT to increase the security of the boot of their virtualization-based system. So you don't want to disable it. You might want to use a launch control policy, but I don't know exactly how that's going to work with, you know, whether Microsoft will allow you to use their secure launch thing while still being able to launch extra stuff. I don't know. Haven't looked into it. So I had been looking at TXT for some other work, Copernicus 2, to create a more trustworthy BIOS measurement system. And I noticed in the documentation that it said the launched code must re-enable SMIs which were disabled as part of the SEnter process. So that was interesting. That sort of told me that TXT is disabling SMIs. But, you know, once I read a little further, it said, you know, newer CPUs may automatically re-enable SMIs on enter entry to the measured launch environment. So then there was, you know, cut out a bunch of slides here and I dug around trying to find documentation about which things behave which way. And eventually I gave up and had to ask Intel and Intel said, well, Nehalem, so first generation uh, core series and newer are just gonna re-enable SMIs automatically. So that was not particularly helpful for my attack. And I subsequently concluded, well, this SMI suppression via TXT probably only works on older systems that we don't really care about anymore. Now that said, as I was recently, you know, looking around and trying to spin up a little bit more on how Microsoft's secure launch worked, they had this blog post, which, you know, talked about how they use TXT to increase the security. And that's good, but they had this picture here that showed this interesting SMIs allowed and then the dynamic route of trust for measurement event, meaning TXT launch. So TXT, trusted computing base is launched and the SMIs are like suppressed here and then SMIs are allowed thereafter. So it seems like there's still, you know, some sort of SMI suppression going on. And the real question is just like, is this automatic SMI re-enablement? Is this maybe configurable? So, you know, that bears further investigation. And just in general, this is a potential research opportunity that, you know, are there other ways to suppress SMIs? Now, this is a not the best research opportunity because these days people should be using protected range registers in addition to BIOS lock enable, but I'm sure you can find systems out there that are not using uh, protected range registers properly. And if they're only depending on this, then if you can find some new SMI suppression mechanism, you may be able to break into the BIOS.